we know that spiritual laws are superior to natural laws because through faith we understand that the physical world is an offspring of the spiritual one in other words the natural is birthed out of the spiritual now even among spiritual laws certain laws are superior to others today our focus is on the law of life which is the very strategy of god to make us victorious please stay tuned and stay until the end to engage on a key implication of this study welcome to the Berean tribe greetings brethren i trust you are doing well by the grace of god welcome on the Berean tribe we will embark yet again on a journey through scripture just like the Bereans that were mentioned in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Our focus today is on understanding the law of life or rather the law of Zoe, the very strategy of God to equip us for victory. First, let's start with a quick background for what a law is. So, for the purpose of our study, a very practical or functional definition of a law is a system of constant outcome under certain specific condition or almost always predictable outcome governed by certain principle. Now, to illustrate this practical or functional definition, uh, one well, well known law of physics is the law of gravity. Without getting into the complexity of science regarding this law, one clear implication as we were all told in our early classes in physics is that on earth, anytime you throw a stone in the air, it will come back fully on the ground. This is the implication of the law of gravity. So this is a predictable uh, outcome. It's a predictable as a constant under the condition that you are here on earth, this will happen again and again. So this is a constant. Now, secondly, let's continue by looking in the scriptures where the law of life is highlighted prominently. Let's look into Romans chapter 8 verse 2. There it is written, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, we see the apostle revealing to us the hierarchy of two spiritual laws. The law of life or the law of the spirit of life and the law of sin. We, while both laws coexist together, the apostle is emphasizing the overriding power, the superiority of the law of life. The Greek word used there for life is zoe, that is the very life of God. Using our functional definition, we will find that the predictable consequence of sin is death. The predictable consequence of having the life of God, which is void of sin, is victory over sin. Another example of the superiority of laws is found in the law of lift and the law of gravity. Now, a plane is heavier than a stone, right? But the plane does not fall because the law of lift is higher than the law of gravity in simple terms. The law of gravity is still there, but it kind of submit, give way to a higher law to let the plane fly instead of falling. Paul is therefore revealing to us the strategy of God to bring us to the place of victory over sin. To appreciate this more accurately, let us go back a bit to the delivery of the apostles in Romans chapter 7. 
In Romans chapter 7, verse 21 to 25, it is written, I find then a law that is evil present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, oh, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. We see the duality of laws again here emphasized by the apostles. These scriptures have been mostly misunderstood without the full picture that Paul is giving us in the whole book. He is exposing to us the reality of this duality, the presence of the two laws, just like the two laws we use as an example, lift and gravity. We can appreciate when we come to Romans chapter 8 now that there is a way of escape which is in the superiority of the law of life in Christ Jesus. Finally, it remains a question for us. How do you plug into that law? How do you activate that law to override the law of sin? Now, this question is very important because many of us born-again Christians do not, cons do not have consistent victory over sin. Many persons want to do good but are frustrated in the end. It takes for us to plug into this law to override the law of sin. The first thing is, of course, to be born again. By the new birth, the Zoe life is made available as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit come into our spirit. The new birth brings us into the economy of the abundant life that Jesus talked about. The life of God, Zoe, that is a full package. Now, why by the new birth we do have access to that life, it does not translate automatically into the result of victory of a sin. What do I mean? We need to cash the check for it to be usable in our bank account. That is what I'm saying. We need to use that law consciously. How do we do that? The response is found in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Let's read it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the flesh manufactures sin, but our regenerated, our regenerated spirit, which became one with the spirit of God, is a receptacle of the, the, the life of God, which cannot sin. And that life is now in us. Therefore, anytime we walk according to the Spirit, we are enforcing the law of the Spirit and dues overriding the law of sin and death. This is how we enforce the law of life, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. To use the analogy of the plane and gravity one more time, the Holy Spirit is the plane that we need to board the plane we need to enter in order to activate the law of Zoe. The operating system is the Holy Spirit that has been installed in us through our new birth for such a purpose. But any time that we refuse to enter the plane, we refuse to board that plane, and we stay on ground, we are still under the law of sin and death. Note the aspect of our will being involved in the whole process. Let's see that in Romans chapter 6, verse 18 to 20, uh, 18 to 19, and then we jump to verse 22. And having been set free from sin, you became slave of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members, as you presented your members as slave of uncleanness and of lawlessness, lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for 
holiness. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slave of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. My emphasis is on verse 19, where the apostle is telling us again to present, to present, that's an active verb, to present our members as slaves to righteousness, so that in, so that is, so that is an act of our will having been empowered to do so through the Holy Spirit. This is even more visible in the verse 16 of the same chapter of Romans chapter 6, where it is written, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? This is a good place for me to land in this study. Many a time, people think that Christianity is only about moral principle. Well, it is intrinsically about living the life of God as we can see it in the scriptures that we expose today. This has so many implications. The fact that we ought to live the very life of God. Please share in the comment section what do you think are the implication of living the life of God. Thank you for joining the tribe today. Did this video bless you? If you are blessed by this channel, please remember to like, to subscribe, and share. Remain blessed until we meet again. Thank you.